Howdy, y'all. Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee. And today on the Hermitcraft server, we are here in front of Decked Out, Tango Tech's brand new deck building, dungeon crawling, adventure loot collecting, blah, blah, blah in game. It is supposed to be madness. So we are going to walk backwards into it because that's how we do everything here on the Hermitcraft server, you know, backwards. But we do have to follow a few simple rules. Tango Tech wrote down all the rules of the actual game in his, uh, what do you call it, how to play decked out video. So we don't have to worry about that too much now. I'm not going to go through everything, but basically, as it comes up, I might mention it. First thing we need to do is go claim a game board here. Everybody on the server is going to get to claim a game board, and so we need to pick up our own head. Let's get that HUD back on. And has this one been claimed? It looks like no one's claimed this one yet. No one's claimed any of these. I don't know if I want to be all the way down. Is this the unpopular end? Let's see. Okay, so somebody's already claimed that one. Oh, that one's Cub. Well, you know what? Cub is always a fun neighbor to have. So let's go ahead and put ours right here. And when we claim it, how, how does this, how do we actually claim it? I put my head up there. Do I... Did he... Okay, it looks... Maybe I punch this. Oh, this shulker box is my opening set. Okay, so I've got a, a dungeon key. Now, to play the game, you have to get dungeon keys. These are hidden all over the Hermitcraft shopping district, but the first one apparently is free. We start with a compass, and we start off with four coins. Now, the coins are good in the shop here, but you don't take those into the dungeon with you. Those are, like treasure that you try to take out of the dungeon if you're lucky now we need to go into the preparation room and let's see or how does this work wait oh this is oh i think the shulker box is actually considered like my deck as well so we need to we'll leave the coins in there for now we'll pick up the deck okay Making sure it's in our inventory. Great. And we need to go into the room we enter the dungeon through. Let's see. The rules video. Okay, it says put your uh, dungeon key here to enter. Let's see what this is. Daily auction goes there. This is the shop. Okay. So items are going to probably be more than the four coins we already started with. Yeah, six. Compass ticker. Lamp slide up over time. When they are all on, a button will appear. Press that button for a free dungeon compass and key. Hey! Wow, so we've already got... Well, maybe not. Okay, so this might be broken. Or maybe it's not broken. Hey, cool, there we go. So we have an extra key now. So we can play the game twice. Which is good, because I didn't... Not find anyone I was looking through the shopping district earlier. This is great. So when we go over here, future expansions that way. Artifact trade-in, tier 1 card trade-in, tier 2 card trade-in. Okay, cool. I think the best thing we can do is just start playing the game. Now, I believe when we go into the dungeon, there will be a place like a locker room that we can put all the extra stuff that we're not supposed to bring in with us right now. So we're going to take the one dungeon key we have or one of them, put it in there, and that opens these doors. Oh, wow, those are actual withers. Of course they are. Okay. So, there should be a bed here that we can use. Okay, yeah, yeah, here's the bed. West, rest weary traveler in this bed, because very soon you will be dead. For in the dungeon, you can meet your demise, or walk away with a glorious prize. So, okay, great. So here's the ender chest that we can use to put all our extra stuff in okay, from the locker. So we're going to use this locker room to lock away all the stuff that we don't need right now. Um, we cannot bring our green screen or these extra ender pearls. And we can bring the compasses in. I, th I don't know if we're allowed to bring two compasses in on the first try. So maybe we put the extra compass in our deck here for our second round attempt. And our dungeon key can go in there. Okay. So, 
We now have a completely empty inventory, except for the compass, which is the only thing we're allowed to bring in, and except for our deck, which currently has no real cards in it, just the coins and the extra compass. So, to activate the dungeon, place your shulker deck against the sea lantern and press the button above. When you have completed your dungeon run, press this button. Your shulker will be returned below with your cards. Ooh, did we actually sleep in the bed? Good. Respawn point set. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So, here we go. Pressing the button. Did that go? Okay. So now do we walk through? Okay, so it was trying to read the cards, but there weren't any. Okay. Okay, there's music. That's worrisome, because that might cause problems for YouTube copyright. Um, let's see. So we need to be very careful listening... Okay, that thump thump there, that's supposed to be my heart. That demonstrates my current level of clank, which is how loud I've been. Uh-oh, that dun 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 means that I just activated, I just made some noise, which might make it easier for the Ravagers to see me. Let's see if we can find... Oh, this is a beautiful dungeon. Can we find a good place? To... Wait, so the compass says I need to go this way. If we can find the lodestone, that is... Can I jump over this? Is this a parkour challenge? Nope, okay. If I can find where I put the compass, it'll give me a prize. I also need to be looking out for blue flame. If I punch out, like, six blue flame, it increases the odds of getting a prize at the end of the dungeon. And I don't know if I've already missed some of that. Uh-oh, I just heard some sort of trigger. That's worrisome. I haven't found any blue flame yet to punch. And... Oh, uh, this is a little, uh, appears to be some sort of playroom. We've got all sorts of Fisher-Price toys here, as well as some jumping jack practice things. Yep, everybody is doing all sorts of acrobatic stuff. This is very fun. I'm hearing flames, but none of the blue flames I need to punch. Uh-oh, that is a Ravager. If the Ravager sees me, it will kill me. So we need to, you know, not do that. Are we getting close to where this compass needs to be dropped? Wait. I feel like we're getting close to the compass drop location. Oh, man. It is so dark in here. I might have to lighten this in the video. This is a one-way bubble pillar thing. Okay. Uh-oh. I just activated a clank thing that'll make it easier for the Ravagers to track me. So that's bad. Uh-oh. If there was a Ravager on the other side of that, it can see me for sure now. So... Okay. Dang it, I'm back to here. There was no way down from here that I saw. But maybe... Whoa. Whoa. Is this a... Okay, this looks like a parkour puzzle. I think I can do these jumps. Dang it. Okay. Not, you know, great. Dang it. Is there a way to get these to open on the other sides? No. Hmm. Wait, oh, can I sneak in through here? No, of course I can't. 
This tango tech is quite devious. Is there no way to get down from here directly? Can we get up here? Hmm. Like, this whole place is a gigantic maze. Let's keep an eye out for any of those blue flames that we might need to punch. I'm worried that I'm just not making sufficient progress. Like, it's hard to tell. Okay, wait, so this will take me down here. So now this way... If we can figure out where the compass points, that's going to really help us. Ooh, this is the room with the cool stars. You did a great job with these nether stars. we got to listen for the ravagers, though. Okay, if we can... F I feel like we must be getting close to the treasure we're seeking. Oh, there's zombie Cleo! She's adorable! Oh, good, there are actual zombies, too. That is less adorbs. No! No! Now you got my compass! That is bad. We need to get the compass to go into the grave so we can get the treasure. Dang it, I was like, right on top of it. I was right on top of where the thing is. Did it go in? Hey, we got a shulker box. We got loot. We got loot. Okay, okay. We got a shulker box full of loot. So now we got to try to escape the dungeon with the loot we got. How do we come in? Which way did we come in? Which way? We have two and a half hearts left. Okay, so we need to go... This is, this is, this is it, guys. This is it. Okay. Okay, so that boom, boom, boom. That means that the Ravagers are going to be coming soon. Is this the way we came? Is this the way to the exit? I was not paying attention. This is a maze. We made it! We made it! <gasps> Woo! Woo! Okay! Huh! Great! Okay, so when you have completed the dungeon run, press this button. Okay, so there is our deck. Wait, our, oh no, the coins that were in there are gone. So that's bad. We lost the coins that were in there and apparently the extra compass. But we do at least have this loot that we got. So we will have three cards we can choose from. We can choose from a Soul Seeker, a Soul Seeker, or a Resistance 1. Uh, Resistance 1 will make us more durable against the attackers by giving us resistance. And the Soul Seeker will make more of those blue flames pop up that we want. So let's go ahead and take that. And the other ones should disappear now, if I understand this properly. Yep, they did. Okay, so that should fully reset the game for the next player at this point. Uh, alrighty, so let's go get our loot box over here to our wall. And go ahead and, uh, let's see, where is our wall? Here it is. So we can go ahead and we got six decked out coins. I don't think those go on our wall, but maybe they do. We can use those for bidding, at least. Um, we got a villager set common, an ocean set rare, and a witch set common. Okay, so we can just start putting uh, artifacts on the board here. And there we go. That's a, a good start. Now, our cards... We'll have to go back in our deck box here. Okay. And I think that the loot box we have to go drop off in his extra shulker area. So we are also going to send Tango a message about losing those four coins and the extra compass. Because uh, they might have ended up somewhere in the system and broken something, and that's not cool. Okay. Please return item supplied by the game here. Boom. Alrighty. So I can buy Stealth 1 for 6 coins. And see, now those are actually going out of there. And then it just popped up behind me. Yay! See, so now we have improved the deck. 
and we can go put this somewhere. I'm scared to put it... I'm scared to carry it with me, though, because I don't want to get attacked by phantoms while I'm walking around. So in the short term, even though it might not be technically correct to store it right here, I'm just going to put it right there. That's just going to be what I do for right now. Because I can't get to the ender chest from here on account of it being inside the uh, area that requires the dungeon key, which I no longer have. We have returned to the shopping district and are looking for additional dungeon keys while we wait for Tango Tech to get back to us about the note we left with the one that we kind of lost the compass for. So why don't we enter Pearl on this way and see what is in here. Is this... Okay, so I'm starting to think that some of this uh, is maybe not entirely all a Mushroom Island. I was going to say, I bet Tango Tech put this hole in Scar's head here so that we could, um, you know, find a, a dungeon key chest. But I'm thinking that this is just a death trap. This is just a giant death trap. Okay, maybe we don't need that right now. Maybe that is not top of our priority list. Dang it. Well, I guess we're going to have to continue searching high and low for those boxes. Time skip. You're not Joe. Settle down, guy. Settle down. Hello, Joe. How are you? <laughs> Howdy, Cub. Joe Hills here. Not being a Ravager as I often am in Decked Out by Tango Tech. Yeah, dude. Have you have you been you've been through this once already, right? Yeah, once. I'm I'm got another key and I'm looking forward to doing a second run. So I'm pretty pumped about that. Ooh, exciting. It's exciting, exciting. Joe, dude, I was looking at your board. Mm-hmm. Looking at your board, and I see you got a witch set common item right there, Nether Ward. Yep, yep. Would you potentially be willing to trade that common item? Uh, for which I, set? I, I need that one. I need that one because I have a witch set unique one right here. Hmm, that sounds harder uh, to get. So that's true. That's true. Would you be willing to to uh, to trade for this ocean set common? Because I think you have an ocean one as well. You have an ocean rare, I think. Yeah, I do have an ocean rare. Um, you know, so, I mean, that's not as helpful as, as completing a set where you have a unique. Um, you know, and I'm not sure that Tango has really made it clear how the statistics are going to work on that stuff. But, you know, if you wanted to throw in an extra coin just to make up the difference, I think that would probably be fair. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. Let's do it. Let's do it. Alrighty. Pop this off. I'm always worried that anything on the floor items. here might be uh, breakable, or like might absorb items, but there you go. Oh, okay. Cheers, cheers. And then here's your ocean set and a coin. Ah, thank you very much. All right, all right. Very good, very good. Sweet. Now, since Fantastic. there's four of these in each set, I probably should start like um, arranging yeah. them in, in like columns, I'm guessing. How are you doing good. yours? That's a good, that's a good, uh, a good strategy, I think. I think I'm going to actually adopt that as well. Probably put the unique at the top and then the common one at the bottom. And go, go that way. I was going to go the opposite way, but you know what? I like that it keeps, you know, people who might be uh, tempted to steal, you know, the unique ones are a little bit more out of reach. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Not that we've sure. had a lot of theft on the server, but you know, it. Uh, it's it better not to tempt people. Yeah, and I mean, it also organizes it so people can see what you got, so you can facilitate trades better too, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, uh, over here, I've got one from the Villager set. I don't know if you've got any of those. Yeah, I don't I don't have any of those, I think. I got uh, Nether set, End set, Dragon set, Chinese set, and Witch set. Ooh. Yeah, it seems like you, you've got a good start there. You might have to start, um, you know, paring down once you hit 12. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I'm going to see if, what, see if does anybody else have, have anything useful. Looks like Vintage Beef has a poison set. He had the same common from the witch set I did, so I'm glad that I was able to trade with you. He's got gotcha. the ocean set uh, sponge that I already had, and he got gotcha. this, uh, con is that called common set? No, oh, dragon set. Okay. Dragon set common, yep. False has N, nether, and witch, it looks like. So the witch common is actually pretty, <laughs> it's a pretty common item, it looks like. Hey, there's a witch uncommon over here. It looks like if you wanted to trade with this fella. Is there? Oh, okay. Yeah, Let's yeah. See. Let's see. Oh the uh, oh the okay the cauldron the cauldron, gotcha yeah maybe hmm yeah I don't know what else he needs that you have but you know he's got the nether set common with the he's got the end set rare mm hmm mm hmm 
Ooh, I like oh. that the ocean set uncommon is. Or no, wait, is it the poison set rare? Is the uh, puff fish? I guess that makes sense. It being a yeah. top poison and all. So he's got yeah, two from the poison Ooh, set. Ooh, Asuma does have a villager set item over here, Joe. Ooh, does he? Let me find where he's yeah. set up. Oh, okay. Nice. Very cool. Yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to the trading aspect of this game and and whatnot. So it should be. Yeah, fun. once people get a lot more items, I think it'll be a lot more common doing trades and stuff like that to to benefit each person for sure. Yeah. Have you had any luck finding boxes in the shopping district? Because I looked the other day and I didn't find any, and that might have just been poor timing because it was like 18 hours after Tango dropped them off. So maybe people had grabbed them all. I have found zero so far. <laughs> okay. I have found none. None yeah. at all. Yeah, I got lucky on this timer machine down here. Oh, did you check this before we arranged to do this trade? It was like three. Yeah, it's still yeah, on it's three. still at three. Okay. Very long timer. Have you have you sat here and waited for it? Is that what you did? Well, the way I got my second box was I walked over here and it happened to incidentally be active. So oh, I didn't okay. wait six hours. Gotcha. I'm wondering if Tango Cam being in this area is keeping this loaded all the time, though. Perhaps, perhaps, yeah. Because, yeah, it was just open, and if somebody else had been sitting there waiting for it, they would have just gotten it themselves, so. Oh, yeah, yep, yeah. very true, very true. Have you purchased anything yet from the shop? Yeah, I got I got my first book. Um, Let's see. There are some things here that are eight coins. I've Dungeon Key being ten coins. I could imagine that being pretty helpful just to be able to start trading coins out for keys quickly. Mm -hmm. Definitely, so, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't have that Loot Finder book yet. Uh, you had mentioned you picked up that card, though. Yeah, yeah, I got Loot Finder, I think Resistance, whoops. Uh, loot Finder, Resistance, and Beast Sense. Beast Sense was pretty helpful when I went through the second time. Mm -hmm. You can, like, see the beasts. It's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, I would imagine so. Yeah, that, that seems pretty solid. So. Yeah, for sure, for cool. sure. Cool. Well, Joe, thanks for the uh, thanks for the trade, man. Glad to uh, glad we could do something that uh, benefits us both here in this oh, game. Oh, yeah, yeah. And thank you for indulging me and in talking strategy a little bit because it's always fun to have stuff to, you know. It's a multiplayer game. Let's multiplay, you know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right, yeah. man. I will uh, I'll leave you to it. I, I think you're going to run here soon. So uh, good yep. luck, man. All righty. Thank you. Keep adventuring. Later. Well, folks, I had a lot of fun playing Decked Out for the first time and trading with Cub. Now I've got this Souvenir Ravager hat on my head that I am super proud of. I'm sure you guys will all want one, too, someday. But you know what? We're not there yet. You may have noticed that this episode was mid-roll ad-free. That's thanks to 50... Um... No, yeah. Oh, no, my hat went away. What is going on? Why do you flip over? Okay, well, apparently my hat decided to go take a nap. Anyway, you may have noticed that this episode was mid-roll ad-free. That's thanks to $50 a month Patreon sponsor Kathleen Heath. So in lieu of that mid-roll ad, I will now read a poem of my own devising. I call this one Concrete Enough. Are there too many types of concrete? Or... Not enough. Sidewalks with pebbles, patios with seashells, pool decks with pockets of air that give them the glamour of Castillo de San Marcos Coquina. Even in familiar places, I tread upon strange stone I do not know how to shape, in comfortable shoes constructed by strangers in unfamiliar lands. I am separated from soil by structures worn and new, atop structures trampled for decades. I am in awe at the ingenuity of others, ashamed at my ignorance of their materials and techniques, and curious how we can expect anyone to simply walk the earth while others invent and construct such varied barriers. Should we be imagining and crafting barriers ourselves that such practice might yet increase our understanding of the makings between us and the earth? I can't see the world in aggregate. Uh. 
Until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.